People talk about things like marriage equality as a moral issue. And it is certainly a moral issue as far as I'm concerned. It's a moral issue because being married to Chaston has made me a better human being. Because it has made me more compassionate, more understanding, more self-aware, and more decent. My marriage to Chaston has made me a better man. And yes, Mr. Vice President, it has moved me closer to God. You may be religious and you may not, but if you are, and you are also queer, and you have come through the other side of a period of wishing that you weren't, then you know that that message, that this idea that there is something wrong with you, is a message that puts you at war, not only with yourself, but with your maker. And speaking only for myself, I can tell you that if me being gay was a choice, it was a choice that was made far, far above my pay grade. And that's the thing I wish the Mike Pence's of the world would understand. That if you've got a problem with who I am, your problem is not with me. Your quarrel, sir, is with my creator. So back to the happy part. Like I said, we got married <laughs> in June at our church. It's a beautiful ceremony, full of family and friends, people Chaston grew up with, people I served with in the military. And I'm so mindful and so thankful that every minute of that marriage, we're enjoying a freedom that came to us because of the work of people like the people in this room. People who saw to it that the cause of LGBTQ equality, that LGBTQ representation was advanced year by year by year. And that's why I stand here not just as a politician who has benefited from the support of the Victory Fund, but as a loving husband saying thank you, thank you, thank you for what you do in this struggle to bring us all that freedom. And we know that struggle's not over just because marriage equality has come to the land. The struggle is not over when several states in this country, including my own home state of Indiana, don't even have hate crimes legislation. The struggle is not over when in so many parts of our country it's perfectly legal to fire somebody because of who they are or who they love. It must change, and that's why we need a president prepared to sign a Federal Equality Act right away. The struggle is not over when transgender troops, ready to put their lives on the line for this country, have their careers threatened with ruin one tweet at a time by a commander-in-chief who himself pretended to be disabled in order to get out of serving when it was his turn. The struggle is not over for our community by a long shot. And it is part of a struggle for freedom and fairness and a better life that goes far beyond the LGBTQ experience. Every American struggles in some way to experience true freedom. And as I contemplate a presidential campaign and speak out about these issues across the country, the thing I'm most hoping to change is the way that my party talks about our values. Because it's no secret Democrats are policy people. We are nuanced people. We're, we're quick with the 14-point plan and the PowerPoint deck. Sometimes a bit slower to explain the values that motivate our policies. So it's time for us to get back into the business of talking about values, especially freedom. My party has allowed conservatives to monopolize the language of freedom because they're so interested in freedom from government, freedom from regulation, freedom from taxes, that they, they can forget about the other things besides government that can make you unfree. Freedom isn't just about freedom from. It's about freedom to. Not just freedom from regulation, but freedom to live a life of your choosing. And the LGBTQ experience is a prime example of why that matters. Because you're just not free if a county clerk gets to tell you 
who you ought to marry because of their interpretation of their religion. Just like you're not free if you're unable to start a new business because leaving your old job means losing your health care. Or if your reproductive health choices are being dictated by a male boss or a politician. So I want to see our country talking, uh, our party talking a lot more about freedom and democracy and security which, by the way, in the 21st century is an awful lot more complex than putting up a wall from sea to shining sea. We need a new vocabulary and a new bold vision, and the big idea of my entering the 2020 conversation is that the best way to get a new vocabulary for our values is to elevate a new generation of leaders. I was in high school when Columbine happened. I belonged to the school shooting generation, the generation that provided most of the troops for the conflicts after 9-11, the one that's going to be on the business end of climate change for the rest of our lives and could be the, worst, the first in American history to be worse off than our parents economically by the time I reach the current age of the current president in 2054. I always love letting that sink in for a second. <laughs> Everyone in our generation, just like anyone who's ever packed their bags on the order of a president and gone overseas, anybody whose marriage has depended on a single vote in the U.S. Supreme Court, everybody in our generation knows that politics isn't theoretical, it is personal. And it's at that personal level that politics can make such a big difference in our lives, a bad one or a very good one because my generation is also the first to know marriage equality is the law of the land for the majority of our adult lives. That didn't just happen. That was the result of political struggle, moral struggle, struggle by people with the courage to make change and bend the arc of history in the direction of justice. And that personal struggle for millions of Americans will be just a little easier when they see themselves represented at every level of political leadership, and I mean every level, thanks to support from people like you. So here we are. It's 2019. America's in big trouble, and we need a fresh start. And yet I am as optimistic as ever, because as every candidate who's been supported by this effort knows, candidates who often made a difference whether they won or not, just by being on that ballot, made a difference before the first vote was cast. Running for office at the end of the day is an act of hope. <laughs>